Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Isaiah 55 can be looked at as an evangelistic type of chapter. It almost reads like a commercial. You have in this chapter the greatest product with the greatest price with the greatest guarantee. You can't get much better than that. Uh, the greatest product being that of salvation the greatest price being that it is free, and the greatest guarantee being that it is God who is promising and offering uh, this salvation. And so you can definitely read Isaiah 55 like a commercial. You know, in our day and age, there are commercials everywhere. Um, you go to the movies, and they have commercials before the movie. You watch TV, they have several commercials uh, scattered throughout a TV program. You drive down the highway and you have billboards with signs trying to get your attention, trying to get you to buy something or trying to get you to do something. Uh, we are just inundated with uh, commercials. And here we have uh, a good commercial. You know, in, in our society, sometimes commercials might be kind of annoying. They, they interrupt our TV program. But here, this is a good commercial. This is a commercial worth listening to and it starts out getting our attention when it says ho the new american standard says or other versions say come and try and get our attention hey you know look over here come over here see what i have to offer you in the middle east you see this in the marketplace quite a bit uh, where people are who are selling things they they're yelling out at you and they're trying to get you to come look at their product look at their jewelry or whatever it is they're trying to sell um here in America, we don't have that so much. If we go to the grocery store, you're pretty much left alone. Uh, you might see a greeter at the door. But over there, you know, everyone's trying to grab your attention. It's a little bit more chaotic. And, and this is in line with that type of thing. It's, it's someone calling out saying, come, come over here, see what I have to offer you. And it's offered to those who thirst. It says, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Um, this is something that could satisfy a person's thirst. You know, if you're a weary traveler back then, and someone had uh, water to offer you, you know, they would say, come, come over here, get something to drink, you look thirsty. Well, this is what the Lord tells us, to everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters that He has to offer. And, and that's the key, we have to each recognize our thirst. You know, there's a lot of times when you might be thirsty you might be dehydrated physically and uh, you may not necessarily recognize it maybe you're busy doing something maybe you're working out in the yard and you're so focused on what you're doing that you don't even notice how thirsty you are uh, but that doesn't mean that you're not thirsty and it doesn't mean that you're not dehydrated and there's a lot of people in the world today who are spiritually dehydrated they are lacking what they need to to not only survive spiritually but also to thrive spiritually and the call to them is to come to the waters you know all of us are thirsty only when we drink of the waters of salvation that God has to offer are we really satisfied are we really sustained and then he says and you who have no money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without cost that is, those who have nothing to offer. And this is a little different than a, maybe a commercial we see today where they want our money, they want, uh, they'll, they'll offer whatever they have, the product that they're trying to offer you, and they'll even split it up into easy installments, they call it. But not so with the, with the gospel, not so with salvation. The salvation that God offers costs no money. And it's for those who really have nothing to offer. And those who have no money, buy and eat. Uh, come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. As a matter of fact, really the gospel message, the salvation that God has given us through Jesus Christ, really is for those who recognize the fact that they have no money. I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3 where it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, And that's absolutely true. Those who are poor in spirit, those who recognize the fact that they are spiritually bankrupt, that they have nothing to offer God, they have nothing to give in return to the salvation that He has to offer. When we recognize how spiritually destitute we truly are, 
we are in the right place to then freely receive the salvation that he has to offer. And then verse 2, he says, Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in abundance. Kind of like a parent would say, you know, uh, come and eat what is good. Stop eating the candy, stop eating, um, you know, the junk food. Come eat what is good for you. Something that will nourish you, that will sustain you. Um, and and spiritually speaking, maybe we do that as well. We we spend our time, our energy, our working, uh, only to still be hungry. You know, we wore out at the end of the day and trying to fill that empty spot within our hearts and all you know and at the end of the day we just find ourselves still hungry still thirsty not being satisfied whenever we try to reach out to this world to be fully satisfied within we always end up empty and so the question is is why would we spend our time our energy all of our works to try to attain something that won't even satisfy us in the end. Why not get what God freely offers that doesn't cost us anything um, and receive satisfaction and receive sustenance? He says, listen to me carefully and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. And so it's not just that we survive, that God gives us salvation so that we can survive and be saved from his wrath but also so that we can have abundance not only have life but have it in abundance when he say come buy wine and milk you know that's a little bit better than water right you know wine uh, represents enjoyment you know when we come to the lord it's not that we just want to try to get by but we want to have enjoyment and the christian life ought to be a life of enjoyment and the milk re represents nutrition and nourishment and so what God has to offer us is more than just survival. It's, it's enjoyment, it's nourishment, uh, it's enrichment, it's a life of abundance. And he says, incline your ear to, or incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. And so he's telling us here to listen to him as, as a person who is in, working in the marketplace and he's trying to get someone to come and see the product. He's like, hey, turn your ear to me, listen to me. You know, whenever you're trying to avoid someone, you typically turn your ear away, you might look down, not make eye contact. But what God has to offer, we need to turn to Him, turn our ear to Him, and listen to what He has to offer, because it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so we have, so far, this greatest product, which is salvation, and we have the greatest price, and that which is without cost. And now let's look at the greatest guarantee. Uh, in the last part of verse 3, he says, And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, according to the faithful mercy shown to David. Uh, and and he, he's calling back this covenant they made with David, and he stuck to that covenant. Even though there were some really bad kings in Judah and in Jerusalem, despite that, he still remained faithful to the covenant that he made with David, that he would never lack a man on the throne. And just as sure as that covenant was for David, it's sure for us that when we come to the Lord and we offer ourselves to Him and we commit ourselves to Him and we repent of the sins that we've committed and we come to Him with open arms to receive what He freely has to offer to us, it's a done deal. It's a, it's a guarantee for us. Um... And so he goes on to talk about, uh, I made him a witness, a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you will call a nation you do not know. Uh, talking about how the Gentiles even be able to receive it, that this salvation would be worldwide. Anyone could come and receive it, drink of the waters. But then he gives some instructions on how we can obtain this product. You know, all commercials, if they're, if they're good, they'll, they'll not only tell you what to buy, but... Uh, give you information on how to buy it. Give you the phone number. Give you the website. Well, here we have instructions. In verse 6 it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. In other words, look for the Lord. Seek for him. Uh, look for a relationship with him. Don't stop running from him. Typically, what people like to do 
or tend to do when they sin and they become guilty and convicted of their sins is they want to run away from God, much like Adam and Eve did when they ate of the fruit. But God is saying, no, don't run away from me. Come to me. Just like the prodigal son. He had to return back to his father to receive the grace and the mercy. And we have to come back to our father to receive that as well. And then it says, call upon him while he is near. Call out to him like a person drowning at sea, calling out for someone to save him. Like, uh, like someone who is caught in a pit or in a trap, and they call out for someone to come and rescue them. We need to call upon the Lord and ask Him to rescue us from our sins. Romans 10 verse 13 uh, talks about how we call upon the Lord for salvation. And when we call to the Lord, He will come to us and rescue us. And then we have to repent as well. Verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. So outwardly we have to forsake the things that we used to do, and then we also have to forsake our inward sins, the, the thoughts that we used to have that were contrary to God. Uh, that is repentance. It's turning away from what we once uh, were all about, and now turning to being all about God and His plan and His purpose for our life. And he says, And let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And so this is a guarantee that we can have. When God says he'll have compassion on someone, and when God says he will abundantly pardon, he is a God who does not lie, and he's a God who keeps his promises. And so when we turn to him, he will have compassion, and he will have pardon. Some people might think that they've committed a sin that's too grievous, too horrific for God to forgive. Well, to say that would be to make God a liar because he says that if we will seek him while he is while he can be found, if we call upon him while he is near, if we forsake our way, if we forsake our thoughts, our evil thoughts and we return to him, he will have compassion on us and he will pardon us. That is a promise by God himself. And to further the depth of this guarantee in verse 8 he says for my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways declares the Lord this really gives us the assurance because with people people sometimes let us down sometimes people give us a guarantee and don't fulfill that guarantee but God's ways are not like our ways and his thoughts are not like our thoughts when he says he's gonna do something he does it and he goes on to say for as is as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So these are some things we can think about today. Um, if we've already received this water that God has given to us, let's continue, continue to drink this water. Because even after we find salvation, there might be times that you know, we become spiritually dry. Let's return back to what we know about the Lord. Let's, let's go back to to the basics. Sometimes we need to do that and recognize the fact that we are here by the grace of God and we are who we are by His love and His mercy. And not to forget that and to begin to think that somehow we are who we are because of what we have done or how great we are or how good looking we are or, or whatever else. It's solely upon God's free grace that we receive the salvation that he has to offer. And let's take this, the message of this chapter uh, to our friends, to our relatives, to our co-workers, and let them know that there is a God who offers salvation. He is the living and true God, and he offers salvation to those who are thirsty, those spiritually dehydrated, those spiritually bankrupt. And he'll not only give you the water to drink, but the wine and the milk to enjoy. So these are some things to think about. Uh, thank you guys for listening in today. Love you guys. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless.